So we have been talking about the adaptive immunity, right? We just started talking about that. And I introduced the idea of lymphocytes. And I've said that monocytes become macrophages and dendritic cells. They live out there in the tissues. They're observing everything. And if they see that there's some kind of a battle that's being fought by your immune system and you're losing, they will swoop in, gather up whatever is causing the trouble, and then take it back to where those cells can communicate with the adaptive immune system. And the adaptive immune system is primarily going to be your uh, T cells and B cells. And remember, T cells, another word for T lymphocytes, B cells, another word for B lymphocytes. Um, the rest of this story that I'm going to try to tell in just one or two videos is complicated. It's so complicated that just the rest of this story is very often the subject of a 10 week or like a 30 hour lecture course um, as an upper division class. So if you're, if you feel like, Hey, there are pieces missing. Yeah, there are. Um, even in your textbook, <clears throat> there are a lot of pieces missing, but it's, it's a really important part of the immune system. I would say it's particularly an important part of the immune system right now, because while I'm fin um, filming these videos, um, we are in shutdown, lockdown because of the, the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus uh, pandemic. Um, and in the coronavirus pandemic, we are all thinking about the immune system and people are saying things like, oh, the elderly, their immune system's not as strong. And people are saying we should come up with a vaccine for the coronavirus, right? So uh, as people are talking about that, what they're talking about this is this, it's the adaptive immune system. The adaptive immune system has the ability to create a weapon to fight off even viruses that your that human immune systems have never seen before. They call this a novel coronavirus or the novel COVID virus. What they mean is this is a virus that for all at least of recorded humanity and probably for all eternity, humans have never had to worry about. The adaptive immune system is remarkable in that it is capable of creating weapons to fight off viruses that mankind has never seen. There is no way we could have sort of mapped this in to our immune system. And so the way our immune system responds is really quite remarkable. And if you ever get the chance to take an entire quarter uh, um, course in the immune system or immunity, uh, it is well worth doing. But we're going to try to break it down to just thinking about one, one part of the adaptive immune system does. I'm actually going to be focusing just on these guys, the oh, highlighter, just these guys, the B cells. I'm just going to be thinking about the B cells. The T cells, are they important? Yes, they're important. There are many different kinds of T cells. There are killer T cells. There are regulatory T cells. For this story, we'll be briefly mentioning T cells that are called helper T cells, but I want us to focus primarily on B cells. Um, now, underneath uh, a light microscope, when we're just looking at stain cells, T cells, B cells, any kind of T cells, NK cells, they could all look like this little guy, but we're gonna be focusing on the B cells. And I want you to remember this for the exam, that the primary job of B cells is to make antibodies. Yes, these are the cells that confer immunity through vaccination. I wanna make one point. I pretty much always go out of my way to make this point in this class that if you catch a disease, recover from a disease, 
and then are immune to a disease, that immunity is conferred because B cells have created antibodies. Could also be the T cell story. If I give you a vaccine so that you get the vaccine and afterwards you are immune to the disease, it's exactly the same. Your body does not have any way of knowing that it developed immunity because you got a vaccine or it developed immunity because you got the disease. So for heaven's sakes, after all this COVID stuff is over, get a flu shot every year and vaccinate your kids against everything you can vaccinate your kids for and have your parents get vaccines against shingles and pneumonia because there is absolutely no reason that we should get diseases and recover from diseases in order to get immunity. Let's talk about how immunity would happen. In order to understand it, let's start by talking about antigens and antibodies. Hmm, where to start, where to start? Let's start with antibodies, okay? Antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that are made by your immune system. Specifically, the antibodies are proteins made by B lymphocytes that have been convinced to respond. And as they respond, they turn into plasma cells. You need to know plasma cells. And they make these proteins called antibodies. Antibodies are proteins. And they are proteins that do a strange thing. They just stick to the antigens they were built to stick to. All right, we'll get back to sticking in a second, okay? Let's talk about antigens. What are antigens? You know, antigens are just molecules that have been used to make an antibody. And now that antibody, if it sees that antigen, it'll stick to it. That seems like a very circular definition, doesn't it? It is a very circular definition. Why? because antigens, they're not necessarily anything bad. Antigens just are molecules that can be recognized by your immune system. And when your immune system recognizes them, if it wanted to, it could make an antibody that would stick to it. So antigens are just molecules that identify a cell or whether it's a good cell or a bad cell as itself. It's just an identifying molecule. Now, why would your body make an antibody against an antigen? You've got lots of antigens on your cells. You've got antigens on your white blood cells, on your red blood cells, on your skin cells, on your nerve cells. You've got antigens all over them. And yet your immune system would not make an antibody against them because your immune system knows, hey, that's one of my antigens. If I took some of my cells and put them into you, your immune system would go, hell, that ain't me. And your immune system would make antibodies against those antigens that were on my cells that are now in you, right? What else? There are antigens that are going to be found that only viruses will make. There are antigens that will be found that bacteria make. And if those viruses or those uh, bacteria get into my body, it could happen that my immune system would make antibodies that would stick to those antigens. Okay, so antigens, antibodies. B cells are really the most important for the way they manufacture antibodies. That's why they're most important, okay? Now, in T cells do quite a number of things. We don't have time for all of that. So we're going to talk about how T cells, a special type of T cell called helper T cells, will work with dendritic cells or macrophages to encourage B cells to manufacture, to make antibodies against a certain antigen, okay? So here's how vaccination works, but 
Here's how a natural disease would work. Let's imagine that you catch the flu. If you caught the flu, there's a virus that is now attacking your cells and encouraging your cells to make millions of more viruses. And now there's all of this virus and, there, and there's trouble going on. And our surveillance experts, the dendritic cells and the macrophages that are living in your lungs or living in your throat, they recognize, oh my gosh, there's a battle going on and we're losing. So those dendritic cells or macrophages would go down there where the flu is causing this problem that we are not able to fight off. And those macrophages, dendritic cells would eat up a whole bunch of whatever that stuff is, mostly virus particles, and kill it, dismantle it, and take it back to the lymph node. And then they are going to do something that is called antigen presentation. As an analogy, antigen presentation would be as if that dendritic cell went back to the lymph node and said, here, I have uh, one of the guns that's being used by the enemy, and I need someone to manufacture a better weapon to destroy this gun. That is antigen presentation. Now, T cells, helper T cells that are in the area, um, well, there are some T cells in the area that they will get that message and they will create their own weapon against it. We're not going to talk about that. We are going to talk about this. There are some T cells that are going to say, I have a B cell friend of mine. I think I can encourage him to make an antibody against that part of that virus. And he will go to those B cells and the dendritic cell the T helper cell, they will go to the B cell and the three of them together will encourage that B cell to turn itself into a plasma cell. And as a plasma cell, what used to be a B cell is now going to start making antibodies, okay? Now, this is going to happen if, if you actually have caught the flu but it's the same thing that happens if you've got a vaccine for the flu. Same thing that happens. The only thing that's different is if you actually catch the flu, you're going to spend a week to 10 days sick while this is going on. If you got a vaccine for the flu, the vaccine has tricked your surveillance expert into thinking you caught, caught the flu and trick your surveillance experts into triggering this exact same reaction. No difference. The only, the only difference is in one, you spend a week to 10 days sick, and in the other, you had out. All right? I think I need to stop here. Yes. And we will continue this on what I hope is our final video.